Okay, people, don't worry. This is still Mr. Zoo Superstition Mountains. My name is Jamil Sweat from Gunstock Reviews. And when I heard Hank Sheffer was doing a story on the Colt 45s, I had to be involved. So, you know, hey, Hank, tell us more about Geronimo Park. Take it away, Hank. In the past, we've talked a little bit about Apache land and also Apache Junction and how the two pretty much grew up together for a while. Um, Apache Junction has been around for quite some time. It wasn't always called Apache Junction, but of course with the, the stories about Jacob Waltz and his lost Dutchman gold, uh, Apache Junction more or less actually became the gateway to the Superstition Mountains. Of course now we've talked about the efforts of Apache Junction growing and bringing more people into town. The first thing, of course, was Apache land. We talked about that in one of our previous episodes. And we've also talked about the Superstition Ho Hotel, which was built about the same time. But today, we're gonna talk about two things that are just right in there with Western history. We're talking about Colt 45s, and Geronimo Park. Now, before you all get real excited, Geronimo Park was a baseball stadium, and the Colt 45s were a split-off team that came to be back in 1960. And what had happened was there were some fellas that knew this was going to happen. One was Paul Richards, who had been a He'd been a player with the Baltimore Orioles, and later he was, a, he was one of the coaches, the head coach. And another fellow by the name of Bill Giles. And Bill Giles just happened to be the president of uh, the international side, or the National League, I should say. And they had come out here to Apache Junction. So they knew something that we didn't know. But another fellow that we talked about before was W.W. W. Creighton, or Bill Creighton. Now, Bill Creighton was a visionary, and he knew that if you wanted to have your town grow, you had to have people, and you had to have something that would draw those people to your town. And somehow or another, he got mixed up with these baseball people. Now, two other fellows who came to town, one was a Bob Smith, there's a common name for you, and another fellow by the name of Roy Hoffheins. Now they hooked up with Bill Creighton and they bought hundreds of acres here in Apache Junction. And what they were doing was they were speculating on bringing this new uh, baseball team that was being introduced into the National League called the Colt 45s. Now you're gonna chuckle, but this is all true. There was also another minor league team <laughs> that was called the Colt 22s. I don't know how that works, but they were the Colt 22s. The guys that came in to us here in Apache Junction were the Colt 45s. Well, Bill Creighton and his people got together, some of them from Superstition Mountain Enterprises, Inc., and they were trying to pull enough money together to build this stadium so that they would have a spring training facility right here in Apache Junction. Now to get things into perspective, we have to bear in mind that Apache Junction had a population of roughly 200, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, but somewhere around that mark we're gonna use. So they started collecting money best they could. Bill Creighton even started an association called the Lost Dutchman Baseball Association. I know, but that's true, true story. They collected as much money as they could and they hired this group out of Phoenix to come out here, got the best bid and build this stadium. Now this stadium was built to hold about 5,000 people. I know you're doing the math already, but the idea is to get people from someplace else into your stadium. The Colt 45 started playing in 1961, end of 61, 62. And they played a couple games out here. 
and uh, they didn't do real well. A lot of them didn't like this, this stadium to start with, and we'll talk about that in a minute. They didn't wind up in last, but they were eight out of nine. Be that as it may. Now we have people who aren't real happy because first off, they hadn't collected enough money to actually pay off the construction people who had built the stadium to start with. And secondly, Bill Creighton had told the team that they would make an X percentage, whatever that percentage was, of the gate of all these people who were going to show up to watch them play losing baseball games. There was $24,000 on that one side, and there was $20,000 that was supposed to go to the contractors. Needless to say, we're about not quite $50,000 on the short side. A lot of unhappy people. Well, come the following year, people showed up for spring training. Spring training notoriously starts in February. By the end of March, middle of March, the Colt 45s had played the last game they were going to play out here. And it was finally decided that they were going to move. Now, it's really kind of interesting because part of the problem was the players weren't very enthusiastic about being here to start with. There, there were only two saloons in town. And as one of the fellows said, he said, there's, there's only two places to go. And he said, one of them, you don't want to go there after dark. And the other place is all full of coaches. We don't want to do that. So they hated that. It's my belief that the one that was the better of the two was the Red Garter Saloon, which was up in the Superstition uh, Ho Hotel. Be that as it may, they weren't happy with that. The other part was that they were out in the desert in a town that had no social amenities at all. Uh, there was nothing for these guys to do. In fact, one of the guys uh, in so much as the walk between the the uh, stadium, which was located where the uh, the Loyal Order of Moose Club is located today, they could walk a, in a straight line across the desert because there was nothing out there right directly to the hotel. And one of the guys would challenge the other fellows to see how many rattlesnakes and tin cans they could shoot with their 22 pistols walking back and forth to the stadium. This was their social activity, apparently. At any rate, the last game was played in March uh, in 63, and the team was lured off into Florida to a brand spanking new facility of $800,000 worth of goodies for the guys. By 1964, the team was completely gone and the uh, the stadium was sold. Uh, it was sold off to the Mesa School District. The school district got all of the bleachers, and they took them and they used them in one of the high schools here out in uh, Mesa. And those bleachers lasted for quite some time, and the configuration at the football stadium there is still the same as it was then. The building deteriorated. Uh, everything that was there at the stadium. Uh, was completely destroyed. It was finally torn down and nothing remained until the uh, the people moved in for the Moose Club and they built their their clubhouse there. And of course now we know that team as the Houston Astros. Thank you for watching this episode of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains. 